Welcome to another installment here at Mr. Polarski's Math Channel. Today we're going to talk about geometry concept, the Pythagorean Theorem. Along with that, we're going to learn a little bit about simplest radical form. Simplest radical form is often involved with problems involving the Pythagorean Theorem because the Pythagorean Theorem would require taking the square roots. Simplest radical form. In terms of square roots, the simplest radical form of an expression means you cannot take the square root of what is left underneath the radical symbol. This will require you to have a knowledge of some basic math skills such as factoring. Here we're going to write the following in the simplest radical form. When we start off with number one, we'll be looking at the square root of 12. 12 is not a perfect square number, which means we cannot take the square root of it and get a whole number answer. But we can break it down into two factors, the first factor being the square root of 4, and the second factor being the square root of 3. Of those two factors, we can take the square root of 4. We write that out as a product because it is, we're talking about factors. The square root of 4 is 2, and since we can't evaluate the square root of 3, we leave it. 2 square root of 3 is the simplest radical form of 12. Number 2 we're going to factor down into the sine and the square root of 3 and in that pair of factors the square root of 9 does evaluate the 3 and since 3 does not simplify or the square root of 3 does not simplify we just write it down giving us 3 square roots of 3 for the simplest form onto the square root of 45 we factored into the square root of 9 times the square root of 5 taking the square root of 9 to give 3 and writing down the square root of 5 leaving us three square roots of five for that answer. The factors of 26 are 1, 2, 13, and 26. None of those numbers are perfect square numbers, therefore 26 is already in simplest radical form. 81 is one of those perfect square numbers, so when we take the square root of it, it just gives us nine. And when we move over to 120, there are many factor pairs that give you 120. You want to be thinking about or trying to find a factor that you can take the square root of. The pair that comes to my mind first is the square root of 12 and the square root of 10. Neither of those are perfect square numbers. I certainly know that 10 does not factor down into a perfect square number, but 12 does. It factors into the square root of 4 and the square root of 3. We evaluate the square root of 4 to give us 2 and we multiply the square root of 3 times the square root of 10 to give us the square root of 30 thus simplest radical form is 2 times the square root of 30 here we have the Pythagorean theorem many of you know it as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared it states that in a right triangle the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse it's important to understand that C in the Pythagorean theorem represents the length of the hypotenuse and that A and B represent the lengths of legs. Remember, the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle in a right triangle. We also have here the Pythagorean triple which is a set of non-zero whole numbers A, B, and C that satisfies the Pythagorean theorem key word here is whole numbers that's why it's capitalized for a set of three numbers to be a Pythagorean triple they must work with the Pythagorean theorem as whole numbers example one a right triangle has legs of length 16 and 30 find the length of the hypotenuse do the lengths of the sides form a Pythagorean triple we have two things that we need to do here first we need to find the hypotenuse of the given right triangle with the given information. So we'll write down the Pythagorean the theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And since we are trying to solve for the hypotenuse, we will be solving for C. So we write it as 16 squared plus 30 squared is equal to C squared. Uh, we evaluate 16 squared and 30 squared. 16 squared is 256. 30 squared is 900 we set that equal to c squared. The sum on the left hand side will give us 1156 and that is equal to c squared. To find the value of c we do the opposite of squaring a number which is taking the square root. 
We take the square root of c squared and the square root of 1156, and that will tell us that c is equal to 34. So the length of the hypotenuse of a triangle with legs of 16 and 30 is 34. Now we need to determine if the lengths of the sides form a Pythagorean triple. Again, the lengths of the sides are 16, 30, and 34. All of those numbers can be classified as whole numbers, therefore, the three numbers form a Pythagorean triple. In example two, we're being asked to find the value of x and to leave the answer in simplest radical form. What you must determine is, are you solving for the length of a leg or the length of the hypotenuse? I start off most of these problems by writing down the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We can see that 12 is going to be the hypotenuse because it is opposite of the 90 degree angle in the right triangle. Therefore, I will substitute x in for a, 10 in for b, and 12 in for c to give me x squared plus 10 squared is equal to 12 squared. So that would give us x squared plus 100 is equal to 144. Subtract 100 from each side to give us x squared is equal to 44. And we solve that equation by taking the square root of each side to give us x is equal to the square root of 44. Now you must analyze the square root of 44. It needs to be in simplest radical form, and does 44 have a factor that's a perfect square? And in fact, it does. The square root of 4. And if we multiply that by the square root of 11, that'll give us the square root of 44. And in simplest radical form, the answer would be 2 times the square root of 11. Here we have a uh, baseball diamond is a square with 90 feet sides. Home plate and second base are at opposite vertices of the square. About how far is home plate from second base? Well, you can see I have a diamond here shaped like a baseball diamond. At the bottom I'm going to draw in the home plate. And at the top will be second base. And we're being asked to find the distance between the two. I label the lengths uh, between the bases to be 90 feet as it's described in the problem and I draw in the diagonal from the end of home plate to the end of second base. Now we need to determine, is this length a hypotenuse or a leg? Hopefully you are able to recognize that it would be the hypotenuse because it is opposite first base or a 90 degree angle. So we'd be solving for C in this particular problem. Write down the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared and the necessary substitutions. We will have 90 squared plus 90 squared is equal to C squared. 90 squared is 8100, so we have 8100 plus 8100 is equal to C squared. That will give us 16,200 is equal to C squared. And taking the square root of each side, will give us the length of C, or the distance from home plate to second base. And C is equal to approximately 127 feet. As usual, I hope this video has helped you out with the Pythagorean Theorem and some problem solving associated with that. I'm Mr. Polarski. If it's helped you, leave a comment, rate the video, Make a channel comment, it'd be much appreciated.